All right, uh, Shalom. Of course, I'm gonna start off by giving all praise uh, to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Yahweh who the world ignorantly calls God, and Yahweh Shai who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. This is just gonna be a spiritual flow, man. You know, I was just, um, <laughs> I was just listening to a couple of these, um, you know, these preterist videos, man. You know, I still can't, um, you know, it still boggles the mind, for lack of better words. It still boggles the mind how you have guys going around here, you know, in the 21st century, you know, talking about, you know, that the world, you know, came to an end. Or the age came to an end. Or the eon. Or it came to an end. You know, 2,000 years ago. Right? And that Christ, you know, returned. You know, back then and, and established, you know, his kingdom. You know, because you got, you know, two classifications. And I asked, you know, please uh, excuse the background noise. I'm, I'm walking over some gravel. In case you hear that. But anyway, you have two classifications. You have a um, a partial preterist, which is somebody who believes that, um, you know, a majority of, you know, prophecies and things in the scriptures, majority of them happen. But there's still some that have not happened, such as, um, you know, Christ setting up the, the actual physical kingdom, you know, a heaven on earth. Right, just as an example, but then you have another group that believes they're called um, a full preterist, right? A full uh, preterist, and they believe that um, you know, literally, you know, all things have been fulfilled, right? Like literally, bear with me for a second. Like literally, every single thing, right? That the kingdom has already been established. You know, on the earth and whatnot. Which is totally, you know, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous on how somebody, you know, could believe that. You know, so, um, I mean, that's absolutely preposterous how somebody could believe that. Here we are in the year 2022. You know, we're out here. You know, warning the people about how, um, you know, Christ is getting ready to return. And how do we know that? Because you had somebody come on the comment board yesterday and they said that, um, you know, well, we don't really know if we're in the last times or not. Right? We don't really know that. And then he quoted that no man knows the day or the hour. And he used that. He cited that as his proof, you know, to support his statement. But here's the problem, though. The verse he quoted, saying that no man knows the day or the hour, that was talking about that no man knows the exact day or the exact time that the Christ will return. That wasn't talking about that you wouldn't know, you know, if you're living in the last times or not. That's not what it was talking about. So these guys are slick, just like how Christians are. You know, they'll use um, you know, certain scriptures you know, to try to say that salvation is for everyone. But just by reading the context, you can see that it's not talking about everyone. A good example of that would be, uh, what is that, Acts, the second chapter. It tells you that, you know, if it shall come to pass, you know, that whosoever, you know, calls upon the name of the Lord, you know, they'll be saved. They'll use that. It's like, but wait a second. If you read the verse literally under it, it says, um, no, you men of Israel, hear these words. So the whosoever was only containing to the whosoever among the children of Israel. It wasn't talking about whosoever among the Moabites, you know, the Edomites, the Canaanites. No, it was only talking about whosoever that's among the children of Israel. Okay, so that's a good example how these guys, you know, they'll twist it. You know, to fit that, uh, you know, that modern Christianity, right? That God loves everybody. That everyone can be saved. That's not in the Bible, 
First of all, scriptures tell you in the Apocrypha that the Lord loves none, but him that dwells with wisdom. The Lord don't love everyone. That's not in the Bible. Where the hell's it say that? I haven't seen that in the Bible. Now, I've seen, uh, you know, cherry picks where to take things out of context, you know, to support that, um, that notion. No, I'll agree on that. I've seen that. But, um, you know, as far as, excuse me, as far as actually, you know, proven in the scriptures, you know, I haven't, that I haven't seen, you know what I'm saying? And I'll just get back to what I was saying. You know that, um, you know, it's very clear the times that we're living in, man. All right, so, you know, don't believe these guys going around telling you that, um, that Christ already returned. You know, so we can't be living in the last times now because all that happened, you know, in the first century, right? All that came to pass shortly after, you know, Christ was, um, you know, crucified. Primarily, they say in um, 70 AD is what they say. That, you know, all the things were fulfilled in 70 AD. That's primarily, you know, what a, a preterist will say. You know, that's the main doctrine. But we know that's not true, man. You know, we know today that we're in them times because, well, for a number of reasons, okay, but, you know, Christ, all Christ said was that, you know, you can tell by the sign of the times, right, that you'll be able to tell, you know, the season you're living in, you know, by the, um, the signs that would be taking place on the earth. Like I'll quote one of my personal favorites, our second Ezra is the ninth chapter. It says what? That when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, you'll then understand that this is the same time where the highest will begin to visit the world. Right, so the highest, you know, Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls God, you know, he's beginning to visit the world, man. And it's evident. That's why you have all these, um, you know, volcanic eruptions that are going on. You have all of these, you know, uprisings, you know, of, of people uprising against the government. Look what just happened over in, uh, was it, Kazakhstan, like last week. That's a prime example, man. And that's all in the scriptures. That's all in the scriptures that those things will be taking place. Okay, wars, rumors of wars, look what is going on right now as they speak. With uh, you know, this whole situation, you know, with Russia moving their artillery onto, you know, Ukraine's borders, man. Or, you know, near the borders, you know, between the two countries. Okay, so that's, there's definitely big stuff going on right now. You know, and then we can't forget, you know, we can't forget either. That we're still in the middle, you know, of, of a global, you know, um, crisis. You know what I'm talking about. I can't use the word. You know, we're in the middle of a global crisis. Literally about two years now. That's crazy, man. That's, think about that. That's crazy. There's never been a time in history before that can match up with the time we're living in right now, man. Why? Because it bears record that we're living in the last times, man. Or the times before the, the Christ, you know, makes the second coming. All right, so, so things, you know, are going to get much worse, you know, before that happens, of course. And that's why we're out here giving the warning, you know, to the people. Right, things are going to get much worse. You think this is bad? You haven't seen nothing yet. Wait till, um, you know, these Americans... Now go to Walmart and find no food on the shelves. That's going to happen. It tells you in the Apocrypha, it's either 2nd Ezra 15 or 16, which both of them are prophetic. But it mentions that, um, you know, there's going to be a famine of food. So people are going to be out here, you know, stealing their neighbor's food. They're going to be out here stealing each other's food. They're going to break into people's houses. 
they're not going to steal their valuable items such as their you know flat screen tvs no macbook computers no silver or gold no one's going to care about that in that day they're going to go straight towards that pantry man and that's what it tells you it says that they shall destroy their neighbor's house for the lack of bread right for the lack of food and that's the time we're coming into here man you know and, and that's this is just the way it is now these are the things that the lord you know yahweh is going to bring upon the world not just america it's going to be the entire world of course but the one place that the lord has in this scope is america aka mystery babylon the great okay so mystery babylon you know is the headquarters of you know where these uh you know things are going to unfold but of course they are going to happen all over the world and that pro it proves it because all we got to do is go back to the verse i quoted a few minutes ago um second ezra is nine said that when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world this will be the sign that the lord's you know making his presence known nearly paraphrasing it but it said what the world it didn't say one country it said the entire world okay and these things are taking place all over the world why because the people of the world you know are now starting to uh you know rise up against the authorities right and that's uh you know just bears testament to the time that we're in man okay that you know all these things were predicted in the scriptures just read uh you know isaiah the 24th chapter right it says what that the you know the grinding is going to cease and that's exactly what we're seeing right now that's why if you go to these you know strip malls you're going to notice if you pay attention you'll notice that 90 percent of the shopping centers they'll have a um a hiring sign in the front window right they're looking to hire okay but they're having a difficulty you know finding you know workers and for a good reason why because the people are now you know starting to wake up and realize the scam that's going on right you know the people are now starting to get tired of you know living on an unlivable wage and now the people bear with me a second now the people you know are starting to you know uproar about these things and they damn should damn well should okay the people definitely should be and that clearly lines you know with the prophecies okay so you know going back to what i said you know we're definitely you know in those times man you know just got to keep your eyes you know peeled that's why it tells you in uh you know luke 21 you know christ said that uh you know when you see these things come to pass you know look up because your redemption draws near now i'd like to ask well, why does it say to look up that's a real question why does it say to look up what is up there to see and the answer is is these chariots man right these so-called ufos all right well these ufos are actually the chariots of the most high all right these ufos the angels are inside of these you know ufos man okay and, you know you're not you're not taught that you know in christianity you know what christians are going to teach you you know if they even do speak on that subject you know because a majority of them you know don't do that but if they do you know they'll tell you that um at those uh you know ufos are um you know like demonic beings they'll tell you those are um you know satan and his angels in there and i ask 
Because somebody said that recently on the comment board. But then I ask, it's like, okay, well, what scripture do you use to support that statement? Like, well, I asked him, what, um, what scripture says that, um, you know, Satan has chariots. I've never seen that. And I've read the Bible twice. I've never seen that in the, in the scriptures. What scripture says that, um, you know, Satan has his own chariots. His own UFOs. Where the hell's that at in the scriptures? I, I've never seen that. Okay, so you ask them and they don't know. You know, they're just repeating that because they're holding on to that that Christian doctrine. Or the same thing with these guys talking about, um, you know, these, uh, you know, fallen angels. Well, when you deal with the scriptures, you know, the fallen angels just represent the children of Israel. They're not talking about, you know, angels that fell, you know, from heaven because they were disobedient against the Most High. That's not true. Because according to the scriptures, you know, all spirits are in obedience uh, unto the Lord. Okay, the Lord has all spirits under his footstool, so to speak. And it's easy to prove. All you got to do is read them. Um, was all you got to do is read, um, you know, First Kings twenty two nineteen on down. Right, and that's why, in um, what is that? Mark the the uh, fifth chapter. When um, you know, Christ found that man who was possessed by that legion of you know demonic spirits. You know what happened. Was they said, you know, oh, you know, we'll obey you. We'll leave the man alone. But, you know, grant us permission that we can be cast into the swine. You know, the herd of swine that's, you know, not too far from us. And Christ gave them the permission. And they went on their way and did that. But it proves that they get their permission from the Most High. All right? You know, there's not no angels going around. Excuse me. There's not no... You know, angels going around or demons going around doing their own will. Or like, you know, Christians will tell you, you know, that Satan's going around. You know, causing all of this, you know, mischief, you know, all around the earth. That's not true. You know, that's definitely not true, man. You now, all you got to do, bear with me a second, all you got to do is read, um, you know, Job, the second chapter. Right, Job, uh, chapter 2, you know, clearly tells you that, um, bear with me for a second, clearly says that, you know, Satan had to go to the Most High, you know, to get permission in order to bring calamity. Okay, so, you know, they ain't, you know, going around, you know, doing whatever the hell they will. No, they have to all answer back to the power source, which is what the most high, man. Okay, so, going back to what I was saying, you know, you're seeing an uptick in UFO sightings right now. You know, these UFOs are literally being sighted all over the world, man. At a, you know, unbelievable, you know, pace. So there's literally, you know, possibly hundreds of videos, you know, a week. Hundreds of videos going up every week of these, you know, flying, you know, unexplainable, you know, uh, objects in the sky. Which we know what they are. Right, they're IFOs. Right? They are identifiable you know, flying objects. We know those are actually, you know, the chariots of the most high. Right? The angels are the ones who are in those crafts. You know, that's how they maneuver. Uh, Ezekiel the first chapter, Ezekiel the tenth chapter, as a handful of, uh, of scriptures. Okay, but, um, you know, you ain't gonna learn that nowhere else, man. You know, these conspiracy guys online, you know, they'll tell you that they're either fake They'll tell you that they're fake, or they'll tell you that um, you know, that they're 
like of a demonic origin. Sort of the two answers they'll give you. Which both of those are wrong. I'm not saying that, you know, the government doesn't have their own crafts made that might look similar to these UFOs. I won't deny that. I'm sure they do have some type of crafts that can, in some way, shape, or form, resemble them. You know, I won't deny that. I'm sure that's definitely a possibility. But that doesn't take away from the, you know, UFOs that we're seeing in the sky, which are actually the chariots in the most high. All right. Um, but anyway, you know, I'm going to call it the lesson there, and I'm going to say shalom.